Hello, hope you're well. I've not got my webcam on this video because I have spent most of Christmas and then my birthday with a cold. So I have a very festive nose that would put Rudolph to shame. Um, so you don't want to see that. So I've cut it off. The, my webcam, not my nose. Um, today I am going to go through two very small modules that I think are very, very useful for how you handle your scenes and for how you control impatient players. So these two modules are scene transitions and hey, wait, and they actually work together very well. A good way to show you these is going to be, this is, I think, the first time you'll have seen my Ravenloft. Rest assured, one day I will do full foundry showcases for Ravenloft, but I think I probably want my campaign to finish and my players to see it just in case any of them come and find these videos because it is just the most spoilerific blueprint otherwise. Um, so, scene transitions. Foundry can be quite clunky at you loading from one scene to another in the spur of the moment. Now, you obviously have things open at the top as a DM and you trigger it and you load it for your players. If you remember, you'll be going right-click preload scene before you head into a room with them. But still, when you click loads, you never really see it as a DM. But when you activate a scene for your players, their screen goes blank grey and they just get a loading bar. And I find it can be really quite jarring and take you out of the moment. So all that scene transitions does, and you can see I've gone through and put transition markers in locations here that only I can see, is when my group come into this room, if you're familiar with Ravenloft, they would go into this room, perhaps of a dinner party, and they would find Strahd playing the organ. And there's some cool animated art by James RPG Art that I'm going to show you in a second. But you would go right click, you'd activate the scene, and then like I said, boring, grey screen, load and bar, and then it comes up. If I right click on the scene and go create transition, it lets me create a transition effect. Now, what, there's loads of options I don't use here. I think its default settings are brilliant for what I want, but you might want to change this. You can choose, do you want a particular image to come up? So if you have some, you know, two different pieces of art that you want to use for a room, you could trigger this transition. Um, in terms of keeping it in a Ravenloft, a Castle of Ravenloft situation, um, the same James RPG art, you may know that there is two versions of the art for Strahd's tomb. One with the gate up, one with the gate down. You might have a, tran a scene you load. If you load it with the gate down, you might tell it to have the transition image be like a loading screen of the gate being up, and then you can describe it falling down, and your players get the two images right after each other. I'm, I don't really use that. Um... You can choose what colour do you want the background to be. If they're jumping into a volcano, so like a volcano lair dungeon, you might want it to be red, or you might want to use an image of fire or something like that. You can put transition text. I find that um, useful for travel transitions, and you could put, you know, sometime later, or if you have a splash screen that your campaign starts on, or a town that you want to transition into a scene for, you could put something like, you know, um, you know, welcome back. And it shows you what it'll look like, or sometime later. All the full format applies to that as well. Um, you can choose audio to play while this transition happens. So for the example of the gate falling down on Strahd's tomb between the two different versions of the map, you could put a sound in there for like a portcullis or an iron gate falling down. And then how long do you want this transition to hover on the screen for? So what I found, and you might find that you need to change this based on your player's connections. You might find that you've got that one player who is always left loading you know, the scene after everybody else, or the player who's in there straight away and causes problems. I have found for my group 
2,500 milliseconds is enough that they all notice the transition effect, but not so much that we're all sat there going, come on. So yeah, that works for me. Do you want players to be able to skip it? Well, I kind of don't. I, I don't want my players to be able to skip it. It's a nice little buffer. It lets me start to ramp up some narrative uh, without a player just seeing a piece of art and going, oh, I cast count spell. You know, it gives you a couple of seconds. Click save and close. Looks like nothing's happened. What I can do now, though, is when I go right click on that scene again, instead of create transition, I can edit the one I already made or delete it or I can play the transition, and that looks like this. Fade to black for the amount of time, and then load straight into the scene I'd set up. It's something that sounds really, really daft, but I, I absolutely love it. It's um, I first saw it when one of my good friends was DMing a one-shot for me a few weeks ago, and it was one of those situations where it was like, what is this? Tell me all about it. It works very well with the other module I'm going to go through tonight, which is Hey Wait. So one of my players, not so much now, she's kind of been punished in game a few times for it by trigger and traps. Um, I've described before in my videos the player who goes onto Foundry or any VTT and kind of gets... I call it chips challenge syndrome, like like a computer game syndrome. They start running around. They stop treating it like D&D &D with threats and they treat it like a video game. Um, that can get them into trouble. They could trigger traps. They could go into rooms and alert monsters. But you can kind of, and I use the word punish, you know, there can be consequences for that. What's really rubbish for you as a DM is if a player goes rushing into a room where something's meant to happen, or there's people waiting there, and you've got a narrative ready, and they just jump back out, or they slam a door, or they, you know, they go too far for what you want to do. Hey, wait, lets you draw an area out, and if a player enters that um, that square, which they can't see, it will pause the game, and it will pan the camera to them. I have found it very useful. Um, Especially for things like Ravenloft, where there are so many things that, that can happen. I'm going to make a new one here. I'm not going to go off to another one of my Ravenloft scenes. Um, in the tile menu, you have a new icon with a hand. Place hay weight tile. Now, there is something weird about this module. Um, I've not looked into it yet, so I don't know if it's a conflict with one of my modules or if it is just a bit of a quirk. When I click, no matter where I draw where it's going to go. It doesn't appear there. I have to define the position. Now, I don't know where on my map that is. So what I've taken to doing is just put on 10, 10. Um, you'll see how wide it is. Um, you can define of a certain sort of mark that will appear over a player's head when it happens. I'm going to leave that with none. I click update tile. Now 10, 10 means 10 feet in on your scene so I always put 10 and 10 because that will put it up at the top left I don't know if that's someone's gonna get fixed it's a very minor inconvenience especially because I found out quite quickly um, if you're in the tile browse screen you can copy and paste these so if you have multiple triggers on a map you can just do one and then copy and paste it not a particularly big deal I find um, I can resize it to what I want so if one of my players, and again, they can't see these boxes, but if one of my players steps into the room, the game will immediately pause and freeze. Now, if I remember rightly, this won't work for me as the DM. I would have to swap over my browser to, um, swap over to my browser as a player, and I don't really want to do that. So you'll have to just take my word for it, but let's see if it happens. I can't remember. Yeah doesn't there we go steps into it now I need to make it a bit wider there but you can see as soon as you stepped on it paused and it moved over um, which is great if you have something you want to say or if you want to just you go hold on hold on hold on actually 15 foot ago you triggered a trap but you've kept running you ran around a corner and you saw that Strahd's waiting for you 
and now you're in that daft situation where we need to roll time back and deal with the you know the consequences of the trap you stood on but you all know that Strahd's waiting around the corner ahead it can kind of ruin the flow of your session um so i love that for just stopping everything and going wait no hold on that can be great for a situation like this as well where my players step into the room everything's paused and that's my chance to go ah well actually now that i've got you paused i can describe the change in narrative and the shift in scene that goes into our um dining hall um I'm going to do this for the first time in front of you now because I haven't updated my add-ons in a little while, which I know is bad of me, but I'm going to see what do those other ones make. I saw there was the new, um, these info and question and exclamation. Let's see what they do because I don't know yet. Oh, they haven't appeared. They haven't appeared. Where I told it to go. Well, in that case, let me just make a new one altogether. We'll call it one of these. Oh, they were there. Obviously, my uh, I was being very daft there. So this one is a question. That one is an exclamation. Let's resize that a bit. And this one is info. So I'm just going to move these down here. And then I'm going to have my character just go walking through all of them. And we'll see what happens with them. So I've never seen this before. This is my first time seeing it as well. I like that. Okay. Maybe it doesn't fit a Curse of Strahd campaign, but that can be uh, very useful. And the last one. Okay. I can see that being useful in like a tutorial map for somebody. Um, so yeah, that was, that was my first time ever seeing those three effects. I hadn't used those before. So yeah, those are obviously just the same sort of pause and zoom functionality, but with a little icon and a sound effect. I will look into whether the sound effects can be changed. But yeah, that is scene transitions and hey wait. So two very, very small modules, um, but ones that I think become very, very useful parts of your toolkit. Um, as ever, if there's any modules you want to see, anything you think that I could have done better or that you want to see happen, please do leave a comment and let me know. But otherwise, thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.